Hey guys, welcome back to Dive the Rock. We're once again on site in none other than Toilet Bowl. So Toilet Bowl, just for reference, is in Cape Manzamo. It's in the Ona area. And uh, Gary's here to kind of yep. tell us a little bit about this, this site. Well, our second location shot, we wanted to begin to introduce new divers and existing divers to some of the different spots. We, we decided to come here to Toilet Bowl because we wanted to show one of the more likable sites, if you will. People really love coming here, they really go after it. But we want to explain why you should or should not come here. This is a more advanced dive site, so you really need to be in a much better frame of mind and have some experience before you attempt to do this dive site. Today is a good example. The sun is out, the sky is blue, but you can even hear or even see some of the crashing behind us. Mm -hmm. So yep. what kind of diver could or couldn't get in the water today? Well, I think, I think that's based on experience and sound judgment. Um, when you finish your initial certification, you have an advanced open water diver. You've done four dives in the ocean, and four dives in Okinawa might be at Arc Dive, where we visited last month, or some of the other similar sites. So you are really not skill-wise or even experience-wise ready to handle this dive site. So we're here with Sarah Lewis, a PADI instructor here in Okinawa, and she is here to tell us everything we need to know about Toilet Bowl specifically. So Sarah, just walk me through this dive site. Well, I love bringing divers here for the adventure. Um, you get to do this cool cross-country trek in through all this beautiful scenery, and then you get to leap into the water. Um, Beyond that, it's definitely the beauty and the sea life. And once you're in, whether you go to the right or to the left, it's two completely different dives. Um, if you go to the right, you're gonna see really exquisite coral on top of these big rock formations with lots of crevices and lots of critters. And if you go to the left, uh, what you're gonna see is, a, or what you'll do is a, you'll be on a very dramatic wall dive. So um, that makes exceptional buoyancy control a particularly important skill for this dive. But there's a shelf if you go just a little bit beyond this point. Um, there's a shelf that's uh, the best spot on the island for seeing sharks. But you want to be really careful um, in uh, evaluating like what the water movement is. Um, in particular, anytime there are swells coming in, like right now, even though there's not a lot of wind and there isn't a lot of chop, you can see like from the results of the swells, when they hit these rocks, that's a huge impact. And right. if you're not prepared for it, you're not ready and you don't time it right, um, you could really damage yourself, you most importantly, or your equipment just by getting slammed on the rock. When the tide is high here, um, you can't even see that spit out there, okay. which is what you wanna use to entry, enter if the tide is low like it is right now. Right. Um, because if the tide is low, this little bowl here, hence the name, yeah. Um, is too shallow to make a safe deep water entry in. Mm -hmm. So you have to negotiate and go out onto that spit, right. which again, if there are swells coming in, it only takes one big swell to come up and knock you off the rocks and maybe you weren't ready and you know now you have a lot of other issues that you're dealing with. You also want to keep an eye on the current. So like right now you can see that there is a pretty good uh, surface current. Yep. And, uh, and then on the exit, um, something that's really important to look for when you're making your entry is if the conditions are like right at the edge of where you feel comfortable getting in the water, it's probably not a good idea to dive because if you've been on Okinawa for any time at all, you know the conditions can change like that. And if it's right on the edge when you get in, you still have to get out. Right. There's no way getting around that. So if it's borderline when you get in, the likelihood of the conditions worsening while you're down there and then making an even more difficult exit when you're tired, you just want to make sure that you avoid that altogether. So you're mentioning all of these conditions. If you had it your way and you wanted the ideal conditions for a toilet bowl, what would they be and what would mm. it look like? Uh, I would come here when it was high tide okay. because you can literally just walk right off the ledge, right down here. You don't even have to worry about walking your way out on the edge. Okay. Um, so I would come at high tide okay. and I would come uh, when it's consistently flat and okay. like glass. Mm -hmm. Um, no, little to no surface current, little to no waves, none of that. Yeah. So none of the swells hitting the rocks and sending the spray up. Right. Um, that's when I would want to dive here. And that's when I would want to take 
new people here. Right. All of those things that you should be doing as a diver every single time regardless of where you're going. And then just don't come here, even if you're with an experienced buddy, don't come here on your own the first time that you do it. Make sure you go with someone who's been here partially for safety and partially so that they can show you where all the best things to see are. Right. So. Right. Thank yeah. you so much, Sarah. Yep. So bumpy roads, a hike, and maybe some help from Mother Nature might actually make a fun day out of toilet bowl, but always make sure you have safety in mind and you have a backup plan. Again, if conditions don't work out, there's always another day. We'll see you next time on Dive the Rock.